Ever wondered if you could, like, totally transform your health in just one week? We're talking ditching the carbs, embracing the healthy fats, and becoming the best version of yourself, all while rocking those skinny jeans you thought were gone forever. Well, buckle up, Buttercup, because that's exactly what I tried to do. Join me as I dive into my 7-day keto challenge. Get ready for some serious food porn, epic fails, and maybe, just maybe, a whole new me. Okay, first things first, we gotta talk about the food situation. Before I could even think about conquering this whole keto thing, I had to raid my pantry like a raccoon in a dumpster. Out went the chips, the cookies, the bread, basically anything that resembled a carb. It was brutal, you guys, like saying goodbye to my firstborn brutal. Next up, the grocery store. Armed with my handy-dandy keto shopping list, thank you Google, I hit the aisles with the confidence of a seasoned keto queen. Let me tell you, the produce section has never looked so good. I'm talking mountains of leafy greens, vibrant veggies, and enough avocados to satisfy even the most extra millennial. Of course, no keto adventure would be complete without a trip down the cheese aisle. I'm talking cheddar, mozzarella, brie, you name it, I bought it. Hey, a girl's gotta have her priorities, right? By the time I was done, my cart was overflowing with enough keto-friendly goodies to feed a small army. I'm talking grass-fed beef, wild-caught salmon, and enough bacon to make Ron Swanson proud. Meal prepping was next on the agenda. I'm talking meal prep containers stacked to the ceiling, perfectly portioned meals, and enough leftovers to last me a lifetime. Okay, maybe not a lifetime, but you get the idea. Alright, day one of the keto challenge, and let me tell you, I woke up feeling like a whole new woman. Okay, maybe not a whole new woman, but definitely a woman who was incredibly optimistic about the week ahead. I had read all the success stories, seen the before and after photos, and I was ready to become one of those keto success stories myself. I mean, how hard could it be, right? Famous last words, my friends, I had my meal plan, my grocery list, and my determination. But little did I know the keto journey is not for the faint of heart. Breakfast was a breeze. Scrambled eggs with cheese and avocado? Don't mind if I do. It was a delicious start to the day, and I felt like I was on top of the world. It was delicious, filling, and totally hit the spot. I got this, I thought to myself, feeling like a keto superstar. I was ready to tackle the day with my newfound energy. I thought to myself, feeling like a keto superstar. I was confident, maybe even a little cocky, thinking that this keto thing was going to be a walk in the park. Fast forward to lunchtime, and things started to get a little... hangry. My morning confidence was quickly fading as my stomach began to grumble. I'm talking full-on carb cravings, people. My brain was screaming for bread, my stomach was begging for pasta, and all I had was a sad little salad with grilled chicken. It was like my body was in full rebellion mode. My stomach was begging for pasta, and all I had was a sad little salad with grilled chicken. I tried to convince myself that it was delicious and satisfying, but my taste buds were not having it. To make matters worse, I had this weird metallic taste in my mouth. It was like I had been chewing on a handful of pennies. Apparently, it's a common side effect of keto called keto breath. Super attractive, right? I was mortified and started to worry about how I was going to interact with people without them noticing. I spent the rest of the afternoon chugging water like it was going out of style, hoping to mask the taste of whatever unholy concoction was brewing in my mouth. I must have refilled my water bottle a dozen times, hoping to mask the taste of whatever unholy concoction was brewing in my mouth, but no matter how much water I drank, the taste just wouldn't go away. By dinner time, I was ready to eat my own arm. Okay, maybe not my arm, but definitely something with a little more substance than lettuce and grilled chicken. I was dreaming of a hearty meal that would finally satisfy my hunger. But definitely something with a little more substance than lettuce and grilled chicken. I needed something that would make me feel full and happy. I managed to choke down some salmon with asparagus, but let's just say it wasn't the most satisfying meal of my life. I missed the comfort of my usual carb-heavy dinners. It wasn't the most satisfying meal of my life. I felt a pang of disappointment as I finished my plate, knowing that this was just the beginning of my keto journey. As I crawled into bed that night, I couldn't help but wonder what I had gotten myself into. Was this really worth it? Would I ever get used to this new way of eating? Day one of keto was officially in the books, and I was already feeling the struggle. But I reminded myself that every journey has its challenges, and I was determined to see this through. Tomorrow is a new day, and I was ready to face it head on. Day two of the keto challenge, and let's just say it wasn't pretty. Remember that whole waking up feeling like a whole new woman thing? Yeah, scratch that. I woke up feeling like I had been hit by a truck, my body ached, my brain was foggy and I had zero energy. Apparently this is a thing called the keto flu. It's basically your body's way of freaking out because it's not getting its usual dose of carbs. Super fun, right? I spent most of the day feeling like a zombie dragging myself from one task to the next. The only thing that kept me going was the thought of all the delicious keto-friendly food I could eat. I'm talking bacon and eggs for breakfast, a juicy burger, without the bun, of course, 
for lunch, and a creamy chicken and broccoli casserole for dinner. Speaking of food, let's talk about cravings. Day 2 was all about the sugar cravings. I'm talking intense, overwhelming cravings for anything sweet. Cookies, cake, ice cream, you name it, I wanted it. I managed to resist the urge to devour an entire pan of brownies, barely. But let's just say it wasn't easy. I'm pretty sure I spent a good hour just staring into my pantry, willing myself not to give in to temptation. By the end of day two, I was exhausted, hangry, and seriously questioning my life choices. But hey, at least I didn't cave and eat a whole pan of brownies, right? Small victories, people. Day three of the keto challenge, and guess what? I finally started to feel human again. The keto flu had officially subsided and I had more energy than I knew what to do with. It was like someone had flipped a switch and my body was finally starting to adjust to this whole keto thing. I woke up feeling refreshed and energized, ready to take on the day. I even managed to squeeze in a quick workout before work which is something I haven't done in like forever. The best part, the carb cravings were starting to fade. Don't get me wrong I still thought about bread and pasta and all things delicious and carby, but it wasn't the all-consuming obsession it had been the day before. I was actually starting to enjoy the keto meals I was eating. I experimented with new recipes, discovered new favorite foods, and even managed to make cauliflower rice taste somewhat edible. The secret is lots and lots of butter. For the first time since starting this challenge I felt optimistic. Maybe just maybe I could actually do this whole keto thing. Maybe it wasn't just some crazy fad diet after all, maybe it was a sustainable lifestyle change that could actually improve my health and well-being. Only time would tell, but for now, I was content to ride the keto wave and see where it took me. Day 4 of the Keto Challenge, and you guys, something amazing happened, I woke up feeling, dare I say it, good, like really good. My energy levels were through the roof, my skin was clearer than it had been in years, and I swear I could think straighter. It was like a fog had lifted from my brain and I was finally seeing the world in high definition. This whole keto clarity thing people talk about, it's real you guys. Not only was I feeling amazing physically but I was also starting to notice a difference mentally. I was more focused, more productive and just generally in a better mood. I sailed through my to-do list, powered through a mountain of work, and even managed to squeeze in a yoga class after work because, you know, gotta keep those good vibes flowing. For the first time all week, I didn't even miss carbs. Okay, maybe I missed them a little bit but not enough to cheat. I was on a roll, and I wasn't about to let anything derail my keto train. Days 5 and 6 of the Keto Challenge flew by in a blur of keto-friendly deliciousness. I'm talking avocado toast, on keto bread of course, cheesy chicken casseroles and enough bacon to make Ron Swanson proud. I even experimented with some keto desserts because a girl's gotta have her sweets, right? Let me tell you, keto chocolate chip cookies are a game changer. They're soft, chewy, and totally hit the spot. But the best part of days 5 and 6, I finally felt like I had this whole keto thing down. I knew what to eat, when to eat it, and how to make it taste amazing. I was no longer a keto newbie, fumbling my way through the grocery store and scouring the internet for recipes. I was a keto queen, ruling my kitchen with confidence and ease. Day 7 of the Keto Challenge arrived and with it, a mix of emotions. I was proud of myself for sticking to the challenge, excited to see the final results and a little bit sad that it was all coming to an end. I had to admit I had grown rather fond of this whole keto thing, who knew that eating so much fat could actually make you feel so good? But the real question was, did it work? Did I lose weight? Did I feel better? Was it all worth it? The answer, my friends, is a resounding yes. After 7 days of keto, I had lost a significant amount of weight, my clothes were fitting better and I felt amazing. My energy levels were through the roof, my skin was glowing, and I felt like I could conquer the world. But the best part, I had proven to myself that I could do it. I could stick to a challenge, make a change, and come out on the other side feeling better than ever. So there you have it, my 7-day keto journey. It was a wild ride full of ups and downs, cravings and triumphs, but ultimately it was an amazing experience that taught me a ton about my body and my relationship with food. If you're looking for a way to jumpstart your health journey, I highly recommend giving the 7-day keto challenge a try. You never know, you might just surprise yourself with what you can achieve. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below with your thoughts or questions. I love hearing from you guys. And stay tuned for 5 easy keto snacks you need to try coming up next. Trust me, you won't want to miss these delicious and easy recipes.